the thing about me is I, I love boxing and I have a passion for it that anything that comes on the side and I don't mind going through hell and back just to get to do what I want to want to do. I just don't know anybody that's extremely successful that doesn't have a couple setbacks or a couple of foibles along the yeah. way, you know? I, I could list a hundred setbacks or problems I had in life. Today I'm chatting with David Benavidez. He's a super middleweight champion, WBC champion in boxing. You had the title three times. There's a, a whole series of mishaps. You got the title, <laughs> lose the title, get the title, and, and still undefeated. Yeah. So walk us through that a little bit. So, I mean, um, you know, to start off with, I've been boxing since I was three years old. Right now I'm 25, so my whole life I've been boxing three? for 22. Yeah, 22 years now. And, um, you know, it's been a blessing. It's just that sometimes when you, you accomplish what you've been trying to accomplish since you were, like, really young. You know, my first world title, I won at 20, so... And, you know, there's just been a lot of uh, maturing going on after that. You know, the first time I lost, uh, I lost the belt for cocaine use. You know, I got, you know, tested positive for cocaine. And, you know, that kind of just after that suspension, you know, that taught me a lot about myself and my life. And, you know, just try to mature and try to be a better person and, you know, just try to away from the bad, bad stuff. And then, um, you know, I came, I got another opportunity at the belt at 22 years old. And I, I won the belt again. And so, you know, when every, everything started locking up, like, uh, so we'd go to the hotel in, in, in uh, Connecticut, and then we'd just be there for like a whole week, and we wouldn't be able to leave the building, nothing, pro protocols. Mm -hmm. And this was, you know, there's a lot of things that you need to make a good weight cut, you know, and then at the time I didn't have, you know, uh, uh, access to the, those, those things, you know what I mean? And when we'd go train, we'd only be able to be in, in the gym for an hour a day, you know, mm -hmm. downstairs, which was only elliptical, and a, an elliptical and a treadmill. So there was just a lot of stuff I didn't have access to, and I missed weight by two pounds, and, I got stripped again, you know, and um, fast forward to now, you know, I got another opportunity to fight for the belt, you know, for the third time. So, you know, um, now everything has been good. You know, I've been, I just had my son with my girlfriend and um, he's two years old and, you know, he's my life. And, you know, I feel like I've, I've matured a lot, not only because of what I have now, but because of everything I've went through. You know, I feel like the best teacher in life is experience. Mm. So, you know, we got that through and, you know, you know here we are today. I gained some weight too. I gained about 50 pounds, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> I gained about, I was going to the gym for about seven, seven and a half years. I was going to the gym like four days a week. Yeah. And just weights, weights, yeah. weights, you know? And uh, see, now I was 40 and I was putting up a lot of weight. And, you know, I, obviously I'm not a big pro bodybuilder, steroid guy or something, yeah. but I just wanted to be like a, a fit old dude or have some meat on me as an older guy. You yeah. know, I'm 43 right now. And um, they closed the gym, they closed the gyms everywhere. And I was like, what the? And yeah. um, so I, I said, well, I made a lot of money during that time. I made a lot of money during that time in finance and playing with stock market. And when everybody's scared in the stock market, that's the best. It's like, it's a dream for me, because yeah. you know, that's what, what I'm specialized at and what I'm best at. Yeah. And when other people are scared and making emotional decisions, it's a great time for me to be buying things and yeah. uh, stocking up when things are on sale. So um, I gained 50 pounds sitting on my ass, <laughs> not being able to go to the, and I, I wasn't sleeping right. I wasn't eating right. And I just worked, 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 and you know, I built yeah. a, a new business. The business that I had, um, I was making you know, several million, you know, half a million a month on average. And um, but it required me to be you know, have you know, domestic flights, international flights, international hotels, conference centers, be on stage, and uh, all that shit got taken away. You know, yeah. So that, that threw things off for me. That kind of unwind my relationship with one business, built another business from scratch, made a lot of money in the stock market. And I added a lot to my net worth, but I sure added a lot to my weight. <laughs> yeah, so, a lot of appetite. In the last year, I, had, I lost about 45 pounds. I gained about 17, 16, 17 pounds of muscle. Lost about 45 pounds of fat. So I'm down about 30 yeah. pounds overall. But you know, getting a little yeah, meat back little... on me and being. But all, that was from boxing and MMA training. So oh yeah. I was never I was never training before then, and you know the last year I spent an awful lot of time on that. So it did a lot for my health and fitness. I'm not going to be a world champion yeah. like you. And, and the did, thing kind of what, me. what messed me up with the, when I was with the, for that training camp, I don't want to put any excuses out there, but my girlfriend, she was pregnant. I think she was like seven months pregnant. So everything she'd eat, I'd eat too. You know, I didn't want to make her feel bad. So that's what we're going to go with. That's what we're going to go with. <laughs> that's a great boy. That's, that's a great man. Though. That's a very empathetic man. So you're going to eat with you later. <laughs> and not talk bad about it later. Yeah. So, um, man, what, tell me about little David. So three years old. You start a craft, I mean, that's really hard for somebody to play catch up to have a skill set like that if you've been taking it seriously. Yeah, so, I mean, the way we started, I mean, when I was three years old, I mean, I really didn't take it serious, honestly. I just did whatever my dad told me to do. 
But my main role model was my brother. You know, he was seven years old. He's been boxing as long as I have been boxing. So he was already started boxing. I'd see him, I'd get motivated. Like, what, you know, I want to do what he's doing. My dad would kind of keep me out the gym. Like, no, nah, it's just, you know, you're too small. I'd be like, no, nah, I want to go in there and train. So I'd go in there and train and, um, you know, we used to run a lot. We used to do jumping jacks and, you know, we, I'd literally train for like an hour. I was three years old. And then we just keep, we, we just got used to that, you know? So throughout the years, we kept getting stronger, stronger. We kept running more and, you know, um, I didn't like any, I didn't like anything about training at all. You know, I hated it, but my dad made me do it. And what motivated me is I wanted to be like my brother. So I kept pushing it, but it was just, uh, you know, it was extremely hard. You know, even if I look back at this day, and my dad was an extremely hard father too. He's a Me he's, he's Mexican straight from Mexico. So he's a, those, those dads straight from Mexico are a little bit tougher, you know, more tough love, you know what I mean? But uh, I feel like if, if I would take my dad's tough love away, you know, I don't think I'd be where I'm at right now, you know, cause he really, you know, I didn't, sometimes I didn't want to train and he'd kind of beat my ass. He'd spank me, you know, and tell me, no, I had to train. So it was hard, you know, just trying to satisfy them, but you know, um, the thing about me is I, I love boxing and I have a passion for it that anything that comes on the side and I don't mind going through hell and back just to get to do what I want to want to do. I just don't know anybody that's extremely successful that doesn't have a couple setbacks or a couple of foibles along the yeah. way, you know? I, I, I could list a hundred setbacks or problems I had in life and um, you know, I'm sure you, you have your version yeah. of those stories as times you didn't want to do it but you know, yeah. you made yourself do it anyway or your dad made you do it at that time. Like, yeah. Or you know the, the the story you mentioned about your your belt. I, I didn't know that. Uh, you know, I didn't know the details. Of yeah. That. And um, but I, it's easy to be a critic at home. You know, it's easy to criticize somebody. Yeah. Oh, he's not perfect, or he's not perfect. Well, I don't I don't know anybody that's extremely successful that's perfect. You know, there's there's always something. Yeah. That, like th those are the times that make you. you and know? that's that's the thing too that sometimes that people don't understand when once you're you're successful really young at age. You know, you get more people, so if you didn't have, you know, bad people around you, you get more people trying to get you to do, you know, all right, you want to come hang out with us and do stuff I'm not supposed to do. And, you know, what I mean, I didn't blame, I don't blame any, anybody for the stuff I've done. I did it myself, but it's just that you get invited to more parties, mm -hmm. you know, you get more yes men around you. And you feel like at the time that there's nothing you could do that's bad. You know what I mean? So I, that's why I feel like now I just, it's more my family and, you know, not, I don't really don't have no, uh, no bad, uh, I wasn't forgot the word, but I don't have anybody that tries to like get me to do stuff. You know what I mean? So I mean, um, like negative influence. Neg yeah, negative influence. There you go. There you go. Things. And now I feel like since I'm getting older too, I have my son. You know, I can't fuck around no more. I can't. I have to be more about my business and more about making money to provide for my son. And not only that, I'm getting to the to the the stage of my career where these more serious fights are coming. Like you got Canelo, you got Caleb Plant, you got David Morrell, you got all these great fighters, and I'm. I respect the sport of boxing, so I gotta respect respect their talent too. And they're just as hungry as I am, so that's what makes me hungrier. You know what I mean? I want to go in there, and, and I want, and at the end of the day, I want to ultimately give the fans the best fights they could possibly see. Now you you're a young man still, and you got an amazing record. You, you accomplished amazing things already, and um, you know, friends of mine that that know you guys that are from the fight industry. You know, a friend Henry Zahudo, uh, my friend Paulie Malachanji, that you know, I train with Paulie all the time. They speak about you with the extreme respect that like they say you're the guy that you're the you're the next big 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 thing in boxing and are going to be one of those legendary names because of your age and yeah. what you did so far so that's a lot of pressure i mean somewhere in your head i don't know how do you how do you think of it do you think about it like that's normal and you have that expectation of like you know of course i'm going to be that guy i earned it i'm working for it or once in a while you'd be like man that's a lot of pressure and Got to hold yourself to that standard. So the way I used to look at it back then when I was young, I'd be like, man, that's a lot of pressure. I don't want to mess up in anything. But when I already messed up, so there's nothing to be afraid of, you know? And the thing about me is I love boxing. I love, you know, I love everything about boxing. I love training, you know, competing. I love everything about fighting too. So there's no pressure on me. I mean, I've been training for my whole life. So, and I feel like I'm getting better. I'm getting more experience. So I just want to, I just want to get in there, you know, and, and give the, like I said, give the fans a great, the best possible fights they could see because I know I'm the one that I could beat everybody. You know, I just need my, I just need my, my opportunity, my moment to shine. What, what, did, was there any other path for you in life that you thought about that um, you ever think of, if you weren't boxing, what would you be doing? Would you be have a, a career doing what? Honestly, I feel like everything has just been 100% on boxing. Yeah. When, I, when mm -hmm. I was in school, I was in ninth grade and I wasn't really paying attention. I never really paid attention to school like that, but you know, it's not good. Um, 
I feel like everybody should pay attention when it, when it comes to school. But me, it was a different story. My dad told me in 10th grade, he's like, you know what? You have to make a decision. It's either boxing or school. I said, shit. That's an easy decision, boxing, let's go. But I wish I wouldn't have done that. But, but you know, like when, when I dropped out of school, I went professional right away. So I feel like everybody has their own path. And the type of person I am, I feel like in any life I would have had, and no matter if it was now, 50 years ago, whatever, I, I would have meant, I would have became a professional boxer. I feel like this, this life is meant for me. And no matter what lifetime I'd be in, I feel like I'd always be a professional boxer. What, are, what about those uh, those days now where there's plenty of days that I wake up. This is like an ongoing joke with a few people that are close to me that I, I don't take days off. Yeah. I, and I, I mean that, like, I don't know when I took a day off, like sometime in my 20s. I'm 43 right now. Um, some days I wake up and I already know, you know, I know what I'm going to be doing three, four months ahead of time usually. Like, I know what I'm going to be doing most days three, four months ahead of time. Once in a while, something cool comes up. I'll make a couple hours here or there or shift something around. But um, I like what I do day to day. We talked about this, you know, just earlier tonight that, you know, ah, if you like what you do, it don't feel like work. But I don't have to spend time with people I don't like. I don't have clients that I don't like. I like my clients. I respect my clients. I, you know, there's people that I wouldn't want to work with. I don't yeah. get money from them. I don't, I don't need that money. I don't care, you know? Yeah. So I don't want the wrong money. I want to do things that I enjoy and I can be myself and not be in character or something. Yeah. You know? uh. um, so, you know, but there's times I wake up and I'm like, man, I got to do some tough something today. I don't really feel like it. And then I remind myself, but, you know, the money gods, they don't give a shit about yeah. my feelings. Yeah. They only care about my behavior, you know. How do yeah. I behave today? Am I behaving in a way that would be congruent with getting the outcome I got in mind, you know? Yeah. And then I laugh at myself <laughs> and then I go do what I was supposed to do to begin with. But yeah. Do you have a method for dealing with that? The, the times that you maybe you're not motivated, how do you use your discipline to go do the thing? So when it... Everything I use, like, as for my discipline is for fights, basically. Um, like I said, I only do, I only box, and every day of boxing I enjoy it. But the way I motivate myself, like, if I wake up sore, like, damn, I don't want to run. I don't want to get these extra miles. And I think in my head, like, the dude that you're fighting is out there getting them extra miles, and, and he's out there trying to outwork you because he knows you're better, and he tries, he wants to beat you. So that's kind of, like, how I motivate myself and I get myself up to do different stuff, um, train a little bit more. But... And I, all honestly, when I feel like I give myself three months to train, and when that training camp comes, I try to go hard as I can the whole three months because, um, like I said, it's something I love to do, and I love to see the result too. So, I had a conversation with Riddick Bowe about a year ago, and you know who Riddick is, but for yeah. those that don't know, that he's a, you know, maybe the most famous heavyweight champ back in the '90s. Yeah. He was, you know, big big deal. He's a legend. And, yeah. And um, I, I believe you might know the history better. I believe he was the first heavyweight that had all four belts over time. Yeah. Uh, also a silver medal in the Olympics before that. So Riddick was a you know very big deal in uh, in his time. You know, legendary guy. Riddick told me that um, he said that you know guys his size that'd be normal. They you know they'd run three miles a day. That if you were you know a top tier guy in his at uh, that time, about three three miles of road work a day. And he said he put in five. And yeah. something you said made me think about that is because he knew his competition was working hard, but he wanted to be doing, he knew they were doing three miles. Yeah. And in case they were doing four, he wanted to make sure he was doing five. So that, I feel like in the boxing mentality, if you do a little bit more than what's like just the regular shit, I feel like it gives you a little bit more motivation and to know that, oh, I got, I'm doing more miles than these guys. You know, I'm not, they're not doing as much rounds as, as, as I am. So it gives you a little bit more confidence to go in the fight and, just be confident of getting the win. You know, a thought I had a long time for um, business related is you know, I do best, I make the most money in business when there's a good crisis, when, <laughs> when, when the world's panicked about something and they're scared. Wouldn't you love it, man, if like you were about to get in the ring and your opponent was visibly scared, would look panicked? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen that <laughs> a lot of times. Wouldn't it be a dream? So like, so there's, there's little things that you notice when you're a boxer. So that's why every, that's why boxing events and UFC events, they do the face off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might not see it on the outside, but you could see it, you could feel it. Once you're in front of somebody and they're scared of you, you look into their eyes and as soon as they look down or they don't want to look at you in your eyes, you know, I got them. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives you that little, that little extra, extra push to let you know that they're scared. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a great feeling. I'm not gonna lie to you. When you have somebody in front of you that you're about to fight, you know they're scared. It's a great feeling. And you know you got the skills and you know you've been yeah. putting in the work. And yeah, like, and it's an know, even better this. outcome once you stop them or you knock them out. You know, it just, it just lets you know 
that you did exactly what was necessary and you worked as hard as you could to get, get that result you're looking for. We both got so excited about that. I, I got away from what I was going to say a moment ago, but you do... You, know, you, you don't you don't get to go to war with the weapons that you wish you had. Yeah. You don't get to go to war with the resources that you wish you had. You you're gonna show up, you know, for for you on fight night or for me when there's a a, a good panic in the markets. Um, yeah, I got to rely on the resources that I created when everybody else was when things were boring, when other people were chilling, they were watching TV, they were doing you know, whatever whatever normal people do. Yeah. Um, I was still working. Yeah. I was working every day. I was learning new things every day. Every day I went to bed a little less ignorant, a little better yeah. educated about, you know, my craft and the things that I focus on, you know? Yeah. And that gave me a lot of confidence that even, you know, when, when, some, when there's a big recession, when there's a big something, um, I'm not going to have time to sleep much. Yeah. So I'm going to have to make decisions while I'm sleep deprived, while I'm over caffeinated, when I haven't slept right for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And it's... I had to do that training ahead of time. Now, I know you have your version of that, so it's kind of why I'm, I'm asking, like, um, you know, putting in all that extra work, you say you're training hard three months before an event, you know? And I imagine you're pretty strict with yourself, you know, with your diet, yeah. and your, you know, your routines. Yeah. What's, what's that feel like? What's, what's a fight camp look like for a pro boxer? Today? You know, a fight camp, um, so like me, so I have to cut, so the first thing is always, you know, I gotta cut like 25, 26 pounds. So the reason I like starting my training camps a little bit earlier, because you talk to a lot of boxers, a lot of athletes in combat sports, they don't, most of them don't do three months, they'll do like eight weeks. Mm -hmm. That's two months. Yep. But I like doing tw 12 weeks, you know, just to give me a little bit more time, you know, to, to, to ease into the training camp, ease into the diet. And um, so some, my last training camp, I went to San Diego. I'm from, I'm, I, stay, I live in Seattle, Washington. I went for three months and it was supposed to be three months actually, but then I ended up staying for four months because they pushed my fight further mm. out. So we'll wake up at six in the morning every day, we'll do five miles. Then we'll come back, you know, we'll sleep a little bit. Then we'll train from uh, 12.30 to 3 p.m. And then come back, rest a little bit. And then we'll do strength and conditioning from seven to 8 p.m. And that's every day. We get a Saturday, no, we get Sundays off, but we'll do that for 12 weeks, 12 weeks training. I mean, it, in, it's, it's, it's really hard work because after, if, if I hope, well, you know how you feel one day after one week of training, how you feel the first week you start training, you feel super sore, huh? I, I train like, you know, this sounds ridiculous maybe, but uh, as an old man, I'm training like nine or 10 days in a row, yeah, and then I take about four days off. Yeah, that's, that's, still, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And I'm putting in long sessions, you know, ask the guys that know me. Yeah. Like, we're, we'll be training four hours a day commonly, sometimes five and a half. Yeah. And now some of that's not like intense physical activities. Some of that is, you know, um, you know, looking at, you know, going through positions, drilling eight positions. So it's not five hours of super intense cardio yeah. or super intense, you know. But I feel like it still catches up with you toward, towards the end of the week. That five hours, five hours that you put in towards yeah. the Thursday, Friday, your body's already beat. You yeah, know I, what I mean? I'm not trying to act macho about it. You know, <laughs> I wake up sometimes, you know, I go to sleep late at night because even after I do that, I still got a business yeah. to run. I still got other things to yeah. do for my for my finances. Yeah. You know? And then you know, I go to sleep. I don't sleep right. You know, I sleep six hours. Yeah. Seven hours is fantastic if I sleep seven yeah. hours. But typically, I sleep about six hours. I'll sleep about three. Then I'll be awake for an hour or two, and then I'll sleep another yeah. three. And I'll, I'll wake up. I'll sleep three hours or so. I'll wake up and go to the bathroom, and they're like, uh, 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 <laughs> Yeah, you fall <laughs> sore. Yeah. Yeah. The champion interview you just watched is just a tiny teaser from this champion's extended full-length interview contained inside my comprehensive wealth building foundations course, The Ten Commandments of Wealth. Get inside the Ten Commandments Wealth, and as a bonus, you get dozens of in-depth interviews with world champions just like this. Leave a comment if you want a business or success question answered, and subscribe for even more winning.